Hey everybody, welcome to Fantasy R&R. This is your host Ryan. And I'm Rob. And today we'll be giving our hot takes on the league's quarterbacks after just one week of play. Let's go. This is Fantasy with Rob and Ryan. Fantasy R&R. Alright, so as we were saying, we're going to be going through uh, all of the positions over time, starting with quarterbacks next week, probably do running backs. Uh, Rob, let's just jump right into it and start pulling out some names out of thin air here based off of what you saw week one. How are you feeling about these players? Is this somebody that you're confident going forward with? Do you think they have a future as a champion in the NFL? Let's start off with one of a, uh, the former number one draft picks we've seen in recent years that people are still on the fence about. Baker Mayfield of the Cleveland Browns. Uh, didn't have the worst game in the world. Didn't have the best either. Lost a close one to the Chiefs. What's your take on this situation? Yeah, I like Baker Mayfield. I think he gets like you know a lot of crap or whatever for his uh, demeanor, if you will. But I just don't see it. Yeah. I really just I, I don't know. I I like Jarvis Landry. You know, I, I think he's a great receiver. I believe that they have something special with uh, Donovan Peoples Jones. That's a receiver for the Browns. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. For Michigan. Oh yeah. And, and with uh, Odell Beckham Jr. out, he's and, gonna be playing a big role, I think. Yeah. And. Uh, I don't know, man. I, it, uh, even OBJ, I, I just feel like he gets drafted every year, and I, it's never by me. And, and Baker Mayfield is, is, is kind of one of those guys. I think if you're relying on Baker Mayfield, I kind of feel like it's a mistake, <laughs> to be honest. Who, 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 who is a quarterback for you that you're uh, kind of low-browing one week in here? Well, I mean, it's interesting we started with Mayfield because, again, I don't feel like he played a terrible game. I know he didn't have any TDs right. for fantasy and he had one interception, but he was putting up yards to the air, and, and in addition with Chubb and Hunt, they were moving the ball down the field and gave the Chiefs a run for the money the first half of that game. It was pretty interesting to watch. But somebody I'm pretty low on at the moment, <clears throat> um, I don't know how others are feeling because we've seen him in the M in MVP form and most people bet on him for four to five thousand yards uh, in between there per season Matt Ryan I I think close the gate on this one uh, the Falcons look fucking terrible <laughs> fucking terrible uh, I, I don't know where that team goes from here I'm, I'm a little upset because I, I assumed you know with uh, drafting pits in my money league that I was gonna get some serious uh, targets and yards from Ryan and Pitts. that could still happen it's just a little odd that you know right out the gate they lost to the Eagles that way and I know you and me are actually pretty high in the Eagles right now, but yep. it's it seems like maybe this is just not going to be the Matt Ryan of old. Uh, this could be the, the final year for him where he's just got to, I guess, take the step back and realize it's time for the Falcons to draft someone else while he, while he mentors them. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, I believe he's a free agent in multiple leagues, including our ESPN Keeper League. I don't even think anybody has Matt Ryan. might have been your friend Justin uh, earlier yeah. before the season started. But yeah. 164 yards. Four points of fantasy in our league because you know we have a different scoring system where we don't we don't boost up the quarterbacks as much. Thirty seven percent rostered in ESPN and that's down eight percent after week one. So people are really jumping ship on Ryan. Uh, with Calvin Ridley, I, I say if you got him, you hold on to him, but temper your expectations a little bit with Julio. G Jones gone. There's not as much talent on the field. Pitts is actually kind of small for a tight end, even though I love the guy. We're just going to have to wait for this all to play out. And I think if you've got Matt Ryan in a league right now, you start looking for other options as your QB1. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who's an option, like, uh, who's an option maybe decently available in uh, in leagues? Who, who is somebody maybe you would drop Matt Ryan for? Hmm. I, I actually have the perfect response to that, you know, because you talked about this before the season. We never got together to do, um, you know, that episode. You and me are both working a lot. So uh, this is an interesting idea. Grab Sam Darnold yeah. off of your waiver wires right now. I yeah. love their wide receivers with DJ Moore, mm -hmm. Robbie Anderson, Terrace Marshall Jr., the rookie. I think he's going to end up being a pretty solid force. And, of course, you got McCaffrey. Yeah. Is there any better option there? You, you could have your – this quarterback could be doing dump-offs for you, and you yeah. still have the chance at a 60-yard at a TD. Yeah. So let's look at what, what happened with Darnold. Um, Again, still looks a little rough. Uh, 279 yards passing, almost hits the 300 mark. He's got a TD through the air. He's got a TD on the ground. I know he didn't get many yards, just kind of fell in there. But um, other than that, no picks. He just fumbled the ball. So uh, 16 points of fantasy or somewhere around there. Uh, this guy is 5.9% rostered in ESPN leagues. There are more people that own Matt Ryan 
than own Darnold. <laughs> yeah. And I think yeah. that's just, you know, based off of what you saw last year. Mm -hmm. But you, you and me to even talk about, like, Darnold, we weren't giving up on Darnold yet. I, yeah. I don't think that it was fair what the Jets really did to him. The Jets are a bad organization. They didn't put the right people around him. Oh, yeah. Darnold's got a better coach now. He's got better weapons. Um, he's got a run game. Yeah. And uh, not For only sure. this, everybody take this into consideration. For um, a quarterback of this caliber of what you saw last year, you're actually looking at a guy who had the second best quarterback grade while being pressured for week one. And there's only one guy ahead of that. We'll talk about him later. But Sam Darnold is an option right now. I think he could put up 25 TDs and 4,000 yards this year. I mean, I don't know how you feel about it. No, I, I completely agree. I, I just feel like he fell into a perfect situation. I, I mean, I, I really do, again, like you had said, with the weapons that he's got I think Sam Darnold I think it's only a matter of time till he starts airing it out and um, a, a guy that you compared him to when we were talking was Josh Allen you know like you know a few years in the league just kind of doing mediocre at best and now suddenly mm -hmm. he's got a pretty solid offense behind him and uh, I, I, I yeah, think and, and, and think let's slow down for a time. fucking second there. I, I am not saying that he's going to be Josh Allen. He probably doesn't have the legs. And he's uh, uh, so uh, I hope no one out there is getting ready to call me a fucking idiot in the comment section or anything like that. I, even though I am one, it's I'm just it's one of those things where I think he's just going to. I know you, I, and I, I love that. I love the honesty, <laughs> but yeah, Sam Darnold, I just think, you know, if you've got Matt Ryan on your team right now, yeah. but from now until the end of the season, I think there's going to be a 200 um, you know, uh, points of difference between the two of these guys by the end of the year. You might even see Matt Ryan get benched at some point. So um, I, I honestly think Matt Ryan is going to have bad games going forward, uh, more of them than not, the way he looked and the way that offense looked. I think Darnold will have more good games than not going forward. So go grab that guy. Uh, someone else that you're low or high, why don't you just you know, shoot from the fucking hip here and, and let me know what you got. Yeah, I'm going to talk about one of your guys, Tua. Uh, I'm, Tua, all right, I'm, yeah, good I'm idea. I'm interested. I still think he has tons of talent, but it... I don't know, man. I, I And again, another team that has so many weapons, I just didn't understand last week. And I was like, okay, uh... I don't know if the offensive coordinator doesn't know what he's doing, but there's plenty of talent on that team. I mean, you know, with Tua, you have Jacecki. Gaskin was significantly underutilized. I didn't understand that whatsoever. Devontae Parker, who you just recently picked up, it's a pretty solid team. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, to him, they, I don't know, not fall flat, but I felt like there was kind of a, uh, I, I don't know, I, I felt like it was significantly underwhelming, you know, for a guy who, Again, another first rounder, as we were talking about. Yeah, I think a lot of people felt that way. I wanted to see something a little more. Fortunate enough for you, you have Jalen Hurts. You, you know, he put up a good game, and I, I expect better going forward throughout the rest of the season. I think the Eagles yeah. are going to be very good. But two, I don't know. What's your thoughts? Owning him, what do you, what do you think? Yeah, you know, I've got him in two leagues, in two keeper leagues, where, where nobody really wanted him. I think, you know, one of them, I, I may, like last year, I think probably went a little high. I, I, there was really nobody else available. The running backs were off the board in that competitive money league I'm in. I took two at, like, I think it was, like, pick seven. Um, maybe a little high, because I wound up getting Jalen Hurts off the waiver wires in all the leagues I'm in before the year started. Uh, so different situation. It's almost like I put too much capital into two uh, for him to sit on my bench. But it was underwhelming. I mean, 200 yards, one TD, one interception. Um, got a TD on the ground, but I mean, it was just, you know, goal line. So I think this is what we see out of the Dolphins going forward. Mm -hmm. Conservative, safe. What I'm really upset about is the lack of connection to a had with Jasicki. After yes. throwing to him every goddamn play in the preseason, uh, and now we're seeing this guy get ghosted week one. I'm sure a lot of people are freaking out about that, but I think it's just an unfortunate situation. It's like Corey Davis, man, last year, where you got a chance at 100 yards with Jacecki, but you have equal chance of getting that donut because we've already seen it happen once. Yes. Um, yeah. I do think that Tua just still probably needs a little bit more time to develop, but mm. he might end up being one of those middle-of-the-pack guys. I thought his velocity looked great this time. I mean, people were saying that he doesn't have enough speed on the ball. I, for a left-handed quarterback, I, um, I think he was uh, pretty impressive. You don't see too many of them. They're different to analyze, but he had a nice pop on the ball, and I think you could still you know, kind of trust him going forward, just maybe more of a QB2 role, uh, and that's, that's kind of where I'm at on yeah. it. I mean... Yeah. It's someone that Tua reminds me a lot of right now. Uh, by the way, everybody we're talking about uh, did better than Matt Ryan. Uh, going forward, <laughs> I think uh, another guy that kind of reminds me of Tua, um, 
but but we're seeing some some uh, different play out of him to start the, the year off. Daniel Jones, what what in the fuck is going nah. on there, dude? Can you explain this to me? No, I, I can't and I won't because two guys that I literally I'm pulling up is Daniel Daniel Jones and Jared Goff. I'm not drinking that freaking Kool Aid, no freaking way. Including Derek Carr, not drinking it. I just I refuse to believe in these guys. The Kirk Cousins of the world and the... Uh, That's beautiful. I love that line. Uh, I refuse to believe in I, these men. I just, I just don't believe in it, man. It, even Ryan Tannehill. He's another guy I just... I just believe true colors of How dare you? Show. Tannehill the man <laughs> <laughs> I just... I'm no, not, you're right, though. Man. I'm just... I'm not, I'll take Ben Roethlisberger over all of those guys any day of the week. I just... I just don't believe it. I don't... Just don't believe it. I don't want to believe it. And I'm not going to. Tyrod Taylor is another one we were talking so, about him. Not happening. No Tyrod. Yeah. All right. So let's let's actually analyze this for a second. Sure. I love that you brought up Tyrod too, because Daniel Jones. Might I add, everybody, because he has played a Week Two game, you are looking at the number one <laughs> fantasy quarterback <laughs> right don't now with Daniel this. Jones, 22 <laughs> points a this. game. Uh, don't do this. <laughs> from your over two uh, about. <laughs> About 250 yards of passing in each of these games. <laughs> One rushing TD. Almost 100 yards of rushing yesterday. Daniel Jones might lead the league in fucking rushing yards right now, for all I know, uh, going no. into week two. No. So this guy has already put up an insane amount of points, and he's 10% rostered. Meaning, if you actually believe in this dude, you could probably go pick him up right now sure. after you hear this uh, ridiculous analysis. Why not? And then uh, to compare him to that, let's look at Tyrod real quick. Um <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, Tarod Taylor, Whatever. one of uh, Stephanie's favorite uh, quarterbacks, by the way. Yeah, of course. 21 points against the Jacksonville Jaguars, almost 300 yards of passing, two TDs through the air, and he rushed for 40 yards on four attempts. Um, so he showed off his old scrambling ability. Um, I'm not really sure what I think about that. He, like, again, I remember his days from the Bills with Sammy Watkins. Every once in a while, you'd open your fantasy app, and you'd see that he hit Sammy Watkins for a 70-yard TD. Yeah, but we're talking nice. about a, a Jacksonville defense that, coming from two Jags fans, uh, yeah. God bless our hearts, they right. look really bad. Yeah. No, really bad. Really and, bad I mean, enough, you can yeah. tell how bad we are because we're shipping off our players to other teams who think our, like they could do something. We see Ronnie Harrison, our old guy. He's going over and trying to punch Chiefs. Uh, <laughs> Uh, or I was a Chiefs or Buck, so he's trying to punch coaches in the face. Uh, absolutely insane. So the, the Jaguars defense really bad. Uh, do you think that Tyrod does this again this year? No, I, I don't even want to have this conversation anymore. So I'm stopping it here. And we're talking about All right. quarterbacks, and we're talking sure. about Jags that just got shipped off, and I had to do it. Please do yourself a favor. Go look at Gardner Minshew's photo in ESPN. Go look at his player card. It's phenomenal. Do it right now. Take yourself I mean, a second. You don't if you're even listening, have... do it. Brian, I'm asking you to do it right now. Please, I want to get your candid uh, experience. You're acting like I don't have this guy's portrait phenomenal. on my wall to jerk off to every <laughs> night. Um, look <laughs> at did, that hair. Are you looking dude, at this? It's phenomenal. <laughs> it's phenomenal. Why did we get rid of it? It's fantastic. That dude looks like Billy Ray Cyrus, Joe Dirt, and Tom Cruise all rolled up into one. Damn what right. a fucking mountain of man right Damn there. Right. I love it. I Damn love it. Right. Gardner. We're going to miss you, but you are backing up a fantastic quarterback yes. in Jalen Hurts, yeah. we think. Are you ready for the San Francisco game, Rob? What do you think about I, this? I am. I, I, I think this is going to be a great game. Might even end up being like game of the week, in my honest opinion, because Ooh. I just, I'm just i high takes. on the Eagles. Hot take. So hot. Uh, I, I like the Eagles, man. I, I think my two favorite teams to watch this year are, are, are going to be, of course, the Jaguars. I, love watching teams lose and uh the cardinals and the eagles i think are going to be my two favorite teams i'm going to go out of my way to watch both those teams uh all year long with that yeah and uh you know, I i'm really high on jalen hurts right now you know i picked him up in a lot of leagues this year you saw me going on this these rampages where i'd start buying his rookie cards i have an autograph of his i was prepping for this year because a lot of his stuff was really cheap to buy you know i think he was a was Hurts a second round draft pick? I want to say yes. I, I believe so. Yeah. Um. Uh, but you know, you know, he gets drafted behind Wentz, and that causes a huge scene. Mm -hmm. And you and me start talking about last year on some of our older podcasts. People can listen to if they want to waste hours of their life. That <laughs> we were actually talking about Hurts eventually taking over yeah. the job for Wentz, and we were certain it was going to happen. And now we're looking at 
beginning of this year, we started talking about him like like he might be the next dual threat quarterback. You got Lamar, you've got uh, Kyler Murray, who, yeah. and who's looking fantastic. You've got MVP. Russell Wilson still. Jalen Hurts might be the next guy. Yeah, I, I yeah you I heard agree. it here first. Kyler for MVP. And I believe we even were saying in that podcast about Wentz, it's like it didn't make sense because once again the tools were there for him to succeed, and he sucked. And I was like. Come on, please give Hurts a, just a chance and see what happens. And I think this year we're seeing it. I really do. I think if anybody was low on Hurts being a QB1, I would like to call you a fool in your face. I think it's happening. I, I think it's happening before our eyes. And Do uh, it. Do it, Rob. You're a fool. Poke him in the chest while you do it, too. <laughs> You're a fool. <laughs> I like I like Hurts. <laughs> I like Hurts a lot. And one guy really quick. Uh, Matt Stafford, I think, is just going to revitalize his career with the Rams again because sure. The tools, the tools are there. I'm a tool man, tool man, Taylor. Yeah, there's tools there, all right. Whatever you want to call me. Over in L.A. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, but (laughs) true. Anyway, I I think Matt Stafford, I think, is going to be a monster this year, and and I think Jalen Hurts, two guys, I think that were. uh, You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. You know what I'm saying? This hot take. Here it comes. So hot. I think Hot Stafford takes. and Hertz, I think, have the ability this year to end up ranked ahead of Aaron Rodgers. I'm not just saying that because he took a huge doo-doo week one. I'm saying that because yeah, I you're believe... saying it because of his stupid facial hair. I get it. No, he, Aaron Rodgers is a douche. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I think he, <laughs> screw you. Sorry, Pat your, McAfee. Yeah, screw you, Aaron Rodgers. You're becoming more and more of a tool. And I was a huge fan. I had him on my years. Uh, I had my team. Uh, excuse me. I had him on my dynasty ESPN league that I'm in with you, Ryan, for years. And I traded him for Miles Sanders last year. And it's not because of his crappy State Farm commercials, which I'm, thanks State Farm for my insurance. But Aaron Rodgers is just a huge tool. And I think there was so much drama in the off season with him. I got so tired of hearing him talk and. Man, if you don't like Green Bay so much, then stop playing. Like, I, I don't understand these divas. And you, you know, you won your your Super Bowl. Not a lot of QBs can say that you did it. I, I don't understand what you think you deserve. I really, I, mean, don't. I don't understand I, I it really either. Don't get it. it. Just, just go to Denver. Drew Lock sucks. You got it in the bag. They're not going to be using Teddy Bridgewater all year. So you got it. Rogers move to Denver. Put Drew Lock in the pass. We, we don't even want to we don't even want to see it anymore. No, so, we don't. Uh, yeah, Stafford. I think he's got uh, <clears throat> Stafford's looking good with Cup and Robert Woods around yeah. him and all those guys. I think he's. You know, I mean, we always said this. I mean, people that were out on Stafford a few years ago, it, it for me it was mostly like, is he okay? Is his back okay? The injury. I've never been worried about that dude's arm. It's no. the. It, you know what the the problem is? The, you know what's worse than having a bad back? Being on the fucking Detroit Lions, <laughs> that's the problem. So go ask Barry We're, we're going to see a resurgence of his career. <laughs> exactly. So, see, so watch. So this is what's going to happen. Goff is going to retire next year. Why am I even talking about this? So I let's actually move, off into Go- move on into Goff. What did you think about that trade? Uh, Detroit. Uh, pull to Detroit. That's what they do. Uh, you know, but good for Stafford. I've always liked Stafford. I've always thought he got a really raw end of the deal. And why Detroit fans would even badmouth him crap go ask calvin johnson why did he retire early because detroit's crap i hate detroit <laughs> crap and i think I, people from detroit hate detroit so i, I mean think, looking at golf I bet you so Stafford I, partied his ass off when he got word of that trip I, I guarantee you that night i guarantee you he was he was thanking the lord above thank you for getting me out of this crap town I, I, Jared Goff, I'm not believing that. Not believing it one bit. Week one, I think we already brought this. Thirty up points right. of fantasy, and, and you're out already. I'm out. Ten <laughs> percent rostered in ESPN, by the way, everyone. Most people don't have Goff on the team. If, if you're in a deep league like we are, we're in a pretty deep league at this yeah. point. Um, yeah. I want to say there's about two hundred uh, and ten possible players off the league. It, off the board any given time. In my money league, it's 250. Yeah. Um, in most ESPN leagues, I have to assume a lot of people just start a standard league with standard roster sizes. At um, uh, you know, so you're getting like 
15 to 16 players uh, a team. Yeah. And, and I could see why Goff would be on the waiver wire there for you know all the other options you have. A lot of those people tend to not even dual roster quarterbacks. They have somebody that they drop to get a quarterback for a bye week. You know, in our league, all of us seem to love having a second quarterback on standby for sure. or for the future that we're hoping will build up. Jared Goff is just sitting on the waiver wires after 30 points of fantasy. I mean, that might tell people something. We're this talking is, about, you know, they're going to Green Bay. I, I mean, do you think he's going to rip apart Green Bay like uh, famous Jameis Crablakes did? <laughs> no, probably not. And uh, Jameis is another guy. I don't even want to waste my breath because I, I just don't. I just. It's so hard for me to believe when I've seen so time and time again, with, especially with Jameis with the interceptions and everything. I just can't believe it. Golf, who had Woods and they had Cup. Yeah, they were good. But I think with Stafford, they're now great. I can't imagine him going to crap town USA in Detroit and having Hawkinson and I, I mean I can't I, I have to be, to be honest with you without uh, Jones you know now on the Jaguars Marvin Jones Jr. I, I mm-hmm. can't even I can't even name a receiver for them and like I don't know I just I don't even let's talk about something funner let's talk about. Trevor Lawrence. Let's you know talk what? Let's about just get, our guy. I was about to say, let's before we get into Trevor guy. Lawrence, let's talk real quick. We're just going to do a couple of speed reads here. All right. You know, let, let, let's talk about Mahomes for a second. He's fucking awesome. All right. Next guy. Yeah. yeah let's talk you. about Kirk thank Cousins. You. Get him off your fucking team. If he dies, he dies. All right. Now that we got that out of the way, let's move on to Trevor Lawrence. And let's, Rob, let's I want you to our, explain to me. Yeah. Explain yeah. to me what you're hearing in Jacksonville while I'm up here in Boston. Boston. So this is hysterical. I want to make this quick. My, uh, so I work at a bar. I'm a bartender, and uh, I get these hot takes all the time. Everybody hates the Jaguars here in Jacksonville. And they're like, oh, they're losing. They lost week one. They lost again. And I had a person tell me <laughs> that they believe that Trevor Lawrence is the worst thing they've ever seen. I don't know when, and, it, when and, the Jaguar fans got spoiled. <laughs> they, all this guy did is throw for over 300 yards, three touchdowns. He had three interceptions, yes. It's his first ever NFL game week one, and you're going to tell me it's the worst thing you've ever seen. I, I, I'm sorry, but I just uh, I refuse to believe after seeing the quality of quarterbacks come through here not named Mark Burnell and maybe even David Gerard. I can't say he's the worst yeah. thing I've ever seen. I actually have to ask that. If there's anybody out there who would even be willing to torture themselves by listening to our show, if you are able to drop a comment, let us know. Has a Jacksonville Jaguar quarterback in, in the last let's say 10 years, has have any of them thrown for 300 yards and three TDs in the same game? Forget about the interceptions. I, I can't think of it. I, I don't even know if done maybe that. Did I'm sure he once. has. Leftwich yeah. probably did it one time, but I, I, I can't believe anybody would ever say that. And after week one, I'm more than happy with what he did. That O-line is terrible. Now, I, we've talked about it That's the other thing. I'm times. not even sure if Leftwich was on the team. The, the team man, I, I can't tell. I don't even but, um, know. But like, the tools, again, I'm going to just keep saying this. That's my new favorite word, tools. Hey, the tools are there, and we talked about this with Chenault and Chark and, you know, Marvin Jones Jr. and then James Robinson. I, again, the play calling, I thought, was just, honest to goodness, I thought it was atrocious. I, I think James Robinson was, talking about significantly underutilized. My God. Underused, yeah. Yeah, and, um, they have. They don't have a tight end on that team, Shaughnessy. I don't know who that is, or why he plays in the NFL. But I think Trevor Lawrence is going to be perfectly fine, and I think Trevor Lawrence could even potentially next year be one of the first quarterbacks taken. Not saying be first, but I think he'll be. And come season, then I think he's. I'll say like seven quarterback. I say he's going to be a top seven quarterback. He's accurate as hell. You think he's going to be top top ten? Wow. I'm going top seven. I'm saying top seven. I think he's... he's, Wow, he's going even further. Let's go. No leeway given to himself. Bold city and being bold. Being bold here, and I think Trevor Lawrence has got it, man. I I think he's going to be good. I said accurate as hell with three three interceptions. I get it. Give the kid a freaking chance. One weekend, he's the worst thing you've ever seen. Give me a break. 
one week in and he's got over 300 yards and three TDs. Yeah. That's the way I'm looking at it. And with Travis Etienne, his uh, good friend and former teammate, you know, hurt for the rest of the year, he, he's already hurt at that position because he was expecting to have another um, guy to throw to. I mean, Etienne was yeah. going to line up in the slot a lot. Now, we don't have a tight end. We didn't go after... Uh, Jesse James in free agency, which blows my mind. We didn't go after Free Amuth in the draft. Uh, um, and we're looking at, you know, same old Shaughnessy from last couple of years. I think Manhurts, Chris Manhurts, was the guy who caught the TD. And we've also got Jacob Hollister, a tight end from back on the Seattle Seahawks. I mean, he's running four string for us. So uh, we were definitely hurt. They know we're not doing anything at that position. He's, we've just, we're sending somebody out there as an extra O-line. And yeah. that's mostly because Walker. our O-line's so bad. Um, but I'm with you on this one. It's crazy to be out on Trevor Lawrence right now. Um, I think that if, if he's thrown 300 yards and three TDs in one week in his first actual NFL game, yeah. and uh, and we're seeing some of those other guys like Daniel Jones and Josh Allen take uh, years to produce numbers like that, he's going to be just fine. So I'm with you on that one. T-Law, we still love you. Yes. Uh, anybody out there, make sure that you root for Sunshine in the Sunshine State. Let's go. He needs all the support he can get right now. But, you know, that's it, I guess, for our positional QBs we want to talk about. Next week we'll, or in the next couple of days, we'll probably move on to the running backs and give some useless analysis on um, fantasy running backs going forward, too. But I like it. I like all the hot takes. Uh, yeah. Jalen Hurts, I think, is going to be my QB MVP out of this list. I'm waiting to see it. Do you have any last words before we close it out? Uh, pick up Sam Darnold. You heard it here first, folks. All right. Once again, this was Rob and Ryan with Fantasy R&R. We will see you next time.